this is a new video. Um, it's a slide video, it's a history one, so those who don't like the Cowan history side of things, I suppose you may as well turn off and go watch one of the other YouTube channels, maybe, I don't know. Um, but this one is um, a heritage one, and it is a um, Coventry Steel um, Knight 47 that we're going to cover. And one of the interesting things about this is uh, about 15, 12, 13 years ago, Heimer um, in Germany contacted me and they'd actually got one of these um, uh, Coventry Steel caravans and they were restoring it. They'd picked it up here in the UK, taken it over to Germany and now wanted to restore it and I sent them pictures and everything to help them along with it. And that is now apparently in their museum. Um, <coughs> All nicely restored. Um, Common Steel, okay, I'll give you a quick um, a quick history lesson. Uh, back in about 1934, there was a company called Airlight Caravans that came um, uh, into being. One of the many manufacturers that started to boom around about 1930s. And um, the guy who started it was a guy called Clifford Daughtry. Now, he did have a partner in this company, um, and I think both of them had worked for Jaguar Cars at one stage. They were based in Coventry, so of course that was all the, the, you know, the main area for, for uh, car manufacturing. Um, Daughtry uh, was reputed to have designed the first uh, car sunroof that didn't leak. That was one of his claims to fame. Uh, and I can quite well believe that because he was a very clever guy. But he went on to Carans and, and he, he, he developed this uh, small range of Carans called Airlight. And the idea was because they were like a lightweight range of Carans, but they were made of like a hardboard. And of course, at the corners, so where the front corner met the side, instead of sort of painting and sealing it, what he did, he used. Um, Bakelite, uh, which is like a, a very early plastic, um, to actually seal the corners. And so we had guys in the factory with irons and this Bakelite. Um, the problem was, after a year or two, the Bakelite cracked, it let water in, and they basically fell to pieces. Airline Cameron's went into liquidation around about 1936, 37. Uh, Daughtry set up another company called Coventry Steel Caravans and they had several addresses where the, 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 uh, the factory was and he produced a caravan called the Phantom uh, the Phantom Knight which was a steel bodied caravan with an ash frame and the windows didn't open up as normal caravan windows did um, they were like car windows they just went up and down like that and it was a steel body, it had a, steel, uh, a chrome bumper on the back, a little bit sort of Americanized, but um, a very futuristic looking caravan. Um, quite expensive, uh, fairly heavy, um, and they did a mock up uh, prototype of a motorhome, which again was very fast forward thinking um, of this bodywork on, but whether any got actually manufactured is pretty. Maybe they didn't because 1939 the war came along. And what a lot of camera manufacturers did then, they turned to doing war work. Uh, some closed down, never reopened. But Daughtry, what he did, he um, got a couple of government um, orders for making ambulances. And what he did, he did trailer ambulances. And Daughtry, being Daughtry, had to do little things like he put little extra lighting in there and, 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 and do little odd bits of things, extra cupboards and things, just to sort of make it more practical than ever. After the war, um, when he came back to caravan manufacturing, uh, he started building these new look uh, caravans, which was um, basically, if you know the, the Bailey, Bailey Discos with the round corners, well, that's what it did with the with the, uh, the, the Contra Steels, the Knights, uh, in 1947-48 he, he, he had radius corners at the front and he also had his own construction where there were like panels that slotted in onto the bodywork, onto the chassis, um, chassis floor and he used a lot of perspex around about the, the van 
the roof, around the edge of the roof to let light in. And he designed a Perspex and manufactured a Perspex um, kitchen unit, shower unit, which was at the front of the caravan, a drop down bed to make it an island bed. This is 1947, don't forget. Um, it was a luxury flat on wheels, it had literally, it was proper, the proper McCoy. Um, they were dear, they were around about £1,500-£2,000. They had electric, they had their own heating system, which was probably, you could say, it was a forerunner of Aldi by many, many years. Um, and it was something that Dorsey designed himself, he designed the lights, um, the electric lights uh, that... Um, uh, the fittings um, and he pretty much did everything um, and they put Perspex windows as well in, in, in these vans. Now they didn't make very many um, and some got used as mobile banks uh, by Lloyd's at the time and Martin's bank long gone now and he went eventually he started making some of the ones a bit small but he did he still did things like ones with a, a sun deck on the top and and um porthole windows in he was a very far thinking guy unfortunately business wasn't his strongest point he was a he would have been great work for somebody like um maybe sprite maybe or so somebody else uh, at the time um because of his ideas um, he was always willing to try different things. So, he eventually, he, he died in the late 50s uh, under, I won't say strange circumstances, but maybe not cut and dried. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think there was an open verdict on his death. But it was a big shame. And if you have the visual history of the caravan, you'll see a um, couple of paragraphs I put him in the pioneers of caravan, of the caravan industry. But uh, back in 2010, I knew a guy, and he's now sadly died, I can't remember his name now. We lived down in Wales, and I'd met him a couple on the old historic uh, meetups in the 90s. And uh, anyway, I knew where he lived, and we were on holiday there, and I decided I'd go and pay him a visit. And I rang him up, he said, Yeah, come along. And he showed me this Coventry. Night. Now I'd, I'd seen one, there was a guy not far from where I, I live now, I had one but it wasn't in very good condition. Um, but anyway, this one had been restored and it had been found on a, a site uh, at, in, in Wales, so I've got the name of the place, uh, and they'd restored it. It'd been, it had been an old chap's. And I don't know if he'd lived in it and died in it possibly as well, because it's a bit creepy. But also, uh, before that, it had been owned by a, a racing driver who apparently had taken it all over the continent. So um, that was his base. Uh, I don't know who the driver was. We would never found out that. But anyway, it was restored back, and I was allowed to do some snapshots. Now, as I say, I wasn't doing video then. Um, uh, although I could have done with the camera, but um, I was a bit sort of... I'd done video back in the early early 90s and just discarded it. Um, but anyway, we got some good, good, fairly good shots. I'd just bought my first DSLR, so I wasn't used to it. And um, I took some shots. And also, uh, what I've done is I've put this onto a video and I've also put on the... Uh, photographs of how it would have looked when it was new, um, some of the interior shots um, from the brochure of that particular year, uh, which you had to buy, which was three and six. Now f that converts to 18p in today's money, which doesn't sound a lot, but back in 1947 that would have been a, a couple, you know, good few quid. Um, now Daughtry, as I say, he was a brilliant designer. I've got a lot of uh, paperwork. Uh, um, the uh, people off, off off the company and people writing in asking for when the next when the van was going to be ready because he did a lot of custom builds now Contra Steel eventually got sold to Cowans International uh, that made just special units and then when CI went bust they went ended up with somebody else and they were just doing sort of uh, but Cowans had long gone by that time 
but to my mind the Coventry Steel Cannon is the UK's equivalent to the Airstream and I think, to be quite honest, I think it's better I really do it's very British inside the shape is very sort of typical of that sort of period of that of Caron's being sort of manufacturers experimenting with the curves and things and I'm getting a bit of that American influence but um, it really is a fascinating uh, camera. And what happened to that camera, I don't know. That could have even been the one that ended up at the Heimann Museum, I don't know. Um, one of the last ones I saw was on that George, what's he called him, is it George Clark, uh, is it? Uh, in, you know, incredible small places, spaces, and there was this, um, what do you call it, this... Um, Gil had converted one into a hairdresser's and they'd added an extra uh, an extra axle on it. It looked so bizarre. Um, and, I, and he was sort of going, oh, this is fantastic. I thought, well, actually, you've just crushed a bit of cow and history there, but you, you wouldn't know any better, probably. And they did, I mean, he did Dutch, he built specials, and one of the specials he did was a um, mobile cinema. Um... I think that was in the th late 30s maybe, or, or 50s, I'm not sure. Um, but he would produce all sorts of special special builds. So, anyway, I've gone on enough. Um, I thought this would make a bit of a different video from everybody, because I've noticed everybody, all the YouTubers going on about prices now, and, and things are too expensive and all this. And I, I think I've covered that a bit, really. Um, and I think I've done, yeah, it's been done today. I think that's a bit of clickbait for some of them. Um, and yes, I will return to the, the sales ground at some stage soon and we'll go around and see what's been knocked off. And maybe get a, a chat to a dealer, hopefully. So what I'm going to do now is say, let you get on, watch this video, and I hope you like it. And also, um, uh, please keep subscribing and liking uh, the videos and, and please do share. And I do want to hear your comments. Anyway, sit back and um, watch the slideshow. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it. 